Hello and welcome to a rather damp and grey woodland shoot. But don't despair, grey and wet days are great for woodland and shooting water. Stick with me, I'm going to show you and give away a few tips over the next three photographs. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I missed last week's um, shoot, to be honest, so I'm not sure if you're getting this video in sequence or not, or it might be a, a week's gap in between. If there has been a week's gap, then I, I do apologize because I do like to get content out every week if I can. But basically a few things came up and I couldn't get out and, uh, and it's, just, it's just the way it goes sometimes. But today we've come out into the woodland. I was desperate to get out and do some photography, but the actual weather forecast today was really quite poor. Um, it was sort of forecasted for rain. Um, there's about a 50, 60% chance of rain. It's really overcast. Now that's one of the reasons I've come out to the woodland. There's also a, a river running behind me, well actually behind you, and you can probably hear that. Um, but it, it's always a good time to come out when it's sort of overcast and cloudy. It, it, it makes for really good good woodland conditions really. Um, you don't want really harsh contrasty light, but you do want sunlight, but you just don't want it overpowering the image and making things a bit sharp and a bit difficult to look at. So I've sort of decided on my first composition, I'm not 100% sure if it's gonna work. It's all gonna come down to when I process the image really and whether I can bring out the lighting that I can see on the picture now and, and bring some life and some um, energy into it but we'll, we'll see what happens when I, when I get home and process it. So I'm going to take these pictures I'm going to show you the setup in a minute we're going to come around the back of the camera and uh, you'll be able to see exactly what it is I've set up and why I've set it up. So you should be able to see the tree just just over over here somewhere um, it kind of stands out anyway, you can't miss it. And my idea was, was to photograph that tree with all this greenery and foliage behind it. Now I'm having to cut it off at the top quite a bit and the main reason for that is because I don't want to get that really bright sky in it because as soon as that gets over bright and overpowering it's going to draw your eye up into the top of the frame. Not only that, because of the contrast range it's going to be very difficult to sort of control the exposure of it if I include that in it. So I'm going to go for a classic 5-4 um, vertical crop which I think is going to give it a really nice sort of aspect and it's going to look really really good in the frame. Now I'm being careful where the um, branches actually exit the frame and where they come out. I'm making sure none of them actually go through a corner because I think that's going to create a little bit too much tension in the image but um, we'll, we'll see how it goes. So let's get this picture taken and um, see what we're what we're looking at. I'm hoping you can see what I've done there. I've zoomed right into times 10 magnification. And I've done that just so that I can actually make sure that I'm focusing on the point that I want to, which is the tree bark itself. And I'm using the autofocus. If you don't know what I've just done and why I've done it, then you want to watch my last series, which was on um, focusing. Um, because I do that so I can get that real critical sharpness. And then we can just zoom straight back out to um, look at the main scene. Let me just clear up this viewfinder for you a minute. Um, so there you can see the crop that I'm actually going for, the 5-4 crop. As I mentioned before, the branches, are none of them are actually going out of the corners. They're all going out the sides of the frames. But I like the way that they're at the top of the picture and they sort of draw your eye into the main body of the tree itself. So I'm quite happy with the composition. So camera setting wise, I've just taken that last picture at a quarter of a second at f4. Um, I've set an f4 aperture because I want to blur the background slightly and, and the same with the foreground just to make the tree stand out a little bit more. I think I'm going to do a video series later on all about exposure and that'll be like a three series set as well. So it might be that you want to um, think about subscribing and then uh, you'll be ready to capture that when it comes out. I am going to bracket a few exposures. Um, I'm also going to take images at um, f8 and f11 
um, just to make sure that I'm happy with them because sometimes when you go to edit, you know, you actually like a different version of the picture. And then uh, we will move on and uh, go to our next, next location, wherever that may be. Sometimes pictures grow on you the more you look at them. I had to do a fair amount of work to get the tree to stand out from its surroundings, but I'm pleased that it looks natural despite all the tweaks. I wish I'd tried a polarizer at the time. I think the reflected light on the leaves is a little distracting. I would not have removed it all, just calmed it down a bit, but it does add some life to the photograph. Well, I couldn't really miss the chance, could I really, to have this fantastic river and um, Walkham flowing along the woodland where I'm walking today and not take some pictures of the river itself. There's another good thing about this um, weather. I may have actually said it earlier, but not only is overcast, cloudy days, and even rainy days, good for woodland photography. It's also really, really good for um, taking photographs of waterfalls and, and rivers as well because you just need that lower contrast when it gets too bright and sunny um, you get a lot of reflected light off the water and it's very difficult to control contrast and uh, it just looks too contrasty for, for my personal taste some people might enjoy it I'm not saying there's anything wrong with really contrasty images anyway I found this position right down by the riverbank um, on a small little sort of like beach area and uh, I'll show you the composition in a minute. But I just want to talk about my camera setup because um, I've put the polarizing filter on. Now, this might go against what some of you know. Some of you are more experienced photographers will probably already know this. So forgive me if I'm uh, going over old ground for you. But the polarizing filter is not only good for um, boosting colors and saturating colors, it's also really good when photographing water for taking some of the reflected light off the surface. So um, I'll put a quick clip up on the screen now for you actually of how I'm adjusting this. So you can just see that with no polarization the water is very very bright and there's a lot of reflected light and as I increase the amount of polarization on there it actually tends to calm that down a little bit and it brings the exposure back in a little bit more and it allows you to bring some more detail back into the scene. Now the key with polarization isn't to overkill it. You don't want to completely destroy the atmosphere and the lighting that you've got. You just want to control um, those highlights a little bit. Like I said, I'm going to do a, um, a, a video coming up soon on exposure. I'm going to go through all the camera modes for exposure. I'm going to go through metering pattern modes and some things like this as well. So um, you might want to subscribe if you haven't already because that's going to be an upcoming um, series in the next sort of few weeks months or whatever and uh, we'll put that all together so let's go through the rest of this camera setup for you so I think from this you can probably get an idea of what the composition is behind me I've come down quite low to the ground because um, there's, there's a lot of bright sky again above and it doesn't really work very well so it works much better in this case if I sort of keep down nice and low and just have some rocks and everything in the foreground in front of me and I'm liking the way that that's working. Now I have set up on the back of the camera 16.9 crop, so it's going to go slight letterbox. Um, because I shoot raw, it always gives me an opportunity to remove that later on if I want to, but I quite like it as it is at the moment, but I'm going to fine tune and adjust that in the final composition. Now I'm not quite sure what sort of um, movement on the water that I want. I did shoot at ISO 100, and um, it gave me some fairly long shutter speeds. I think it was around eight seconds on the slowest one. And uh, I did like that feeling on the water, but I may actually go for some slower ones. So what I've also done is I've shot at ISO 200 and ISO 400 
just to sort of try those different shutter speeds out and I'll pick I'll pick the best one that I've taken. In terms of the other camera settings I'm shooting at f11 um, I'm at 105 mil the maximum sort of length for this lens um, f11 the camera performs quite well and the, and the lens performs very well so that's that's basically what I'm doing so I'm just going to take a few more of these and I'll put the finished image up for you up on the um, up on the screen in a minute and then um, I think it might be time for Ruby and I to have a bit of a cup of coffee and a bit of breakfast maybe even I used the polarizer on this picture and adjusted it just enough to control those highlights on the water and the rocks. I'm pleased with the effect. I had to laugh though when I looked closely at the photograph. I focused on the wrong spot and misjudged the depth of field. Crazy when you think my last video was about explaining how to focus. I don't mind it too much in this type of photograph. We all have a bad day, it's still a great location and I can go back again and shoot it another day. Well, I hope that uh, I hope that you're hearing this and getting it because we're really quite close to the river. Not only that, I think you might be able to see it on the video. I don't know, but you can certainly see it on me. I'm, I'm soaking wet. Um, we did stop for a cup of tea, and uh, yeah, it started raining, which was forecasted to be honest. So I can't complain because I've had a fantastic morning. So the photograph that I'm taking here, this was my sort of target location to be honest. I wanted to come down to a place called um, Double Waters, which is basically where the rivers Tavy and Walkham meet, right on the edge of the Dartmoor National Park. But I think we might be just outside of the park to be fair. Um, when I came down um, previously, it was just too bright and too contrasty and I wasn't going to get the picture that I wanted. But I've sort of I think I might have it this time, although there's probably a few other compositions to have, but to be honest, um, everything's getting so wet at the moment that um, I'm, I'm going to call it just this one composition and maybe look at it a different day as well. But what we've got set up here at the moment, you might not be able to see it because it's just below my camera, is there's a boulder down here, there's another one a little bit further along this beach area, and then we've got another one in the river, and then some others leading you out. So there's almost like a, an S curve through the rocks and then down through the river itself. And the reason that I've done that is to draw your eye into the picture. And right at the bottom of the picture, um, it goes a little bit hazy and indistinct. And this is because of the rain that's falling and also it's quite warm and, so, and, and, and humid. So the mist is rising up out of those trees a little bit. And I really like the way that that looks. I hope it's gonna come over in the picture. I've put the polarizing filter on again, much as I showed you in the last photograph, just to try and reduce some of the um, brightness on the surface of the water and draw your eye into it. And to slow the shutter, down, shutter speed down a little bit more because it's a bit brighter out here now, is I've put a um, 0.9 or three stop neutral density filter on there as well. I've had to set it up all very quickly, so I, I didn't go through the setup with you. Um, I'm shooting at, let's just check this a minute. Yeah, so I'm shooting at the moment at f11 at um, about two seconds. It's varying a little bit because I'm, I'm bracketing. So I think I've been going from um, a, a, around, you know, sort of like two and a half, three seconds up to six seconds in that bracket and shooting at f11. I've done the same as last time. I've also shot some ISO 400 and ISO 800 just to try different shutter speeds, but I think it's gonna be the slower ones which I go for in this picture. Well, it's, really, it's starting to rain really heavy at the moment, so um, I've actually already taken my pictures. So I'm going to um, put my camera gear away, dry it up a little bit, and whilst I'm doing that, I'll show you the picture that I've just taken, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. This is my favourite photograph from the shoot. A small amount of polarisation, natural use of the boulders to lead your eye into the image, and the feeling of recession and depth from the diffusion caused by the rain in the background. 
This was the image that I really wanted to capture today, so I'm delighted that it came out so well. It just goes to show that if you pick the right subject and location, grey wet days can produce great photographs. All you need to do is get organised and keep your gear dry. If you enjoyed this video then please give it a thumbs up. New subscribers are always welcome to join the community. Don't forget the bell icon. Bye for now and I'll see you in the next video.